Matt Bernier with the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Wednesday, March the 6th. Race number 8 down at Gulfstream Park. We're going a mile on the turf course. This is a $50,000 claiming event. Non-winners of two. Lifetime is the condition. Before we dive into the field, head on over to bets.drf.com. All sorts of great deals for you over there. Check it out, especially for new sign-up members. Bets.drf.com is where you need to go to access all the details. Let's take a look at this field. We'll take them right in post-position order, but before we do, head over to the Race of the Day page on drf.com. You can download free formulator past performances. I will rip through this field in post-position order, and you can handicap along. The number one is Moji. Goes out for Mark Cassie. This is a horse that goes into the $50,000 non-two-lifetime condition for the first time. Most recently, in the past two starts down at Gulfstream, has run in starter allowance races. From a number standpoint, this horse makes plenty of sense. And you also look at the field that he faced most recently. The second-place finisher, Cool and Rock, came back and earned a 93. And his next start, the fourth and fifth-place finishers, 76 and 82 buyers, finishing behind Moji in that most recent run. There are a number of things that would point you in this one's direction. There's a part of me, though, that is a little bit curious about running style because his only victory to date through 14 lifetime starts is coming gate-to-wire fashion, and I would imagine it seems unlikely that he will get the lead. We will consult the pace projector here momentarily. Number two is Mr. Discretionary. This horse goes out for Jane Sibeli. Arad Ortiz Jr. has the mount. Uh, Not a great formulator fact. Let's kick things off here for Jane Sibeli. Over the past five years, turf, 180-plus day layoff. One for 37. But 18 of them are in the money. Only a 16-cent ROI. The only thing I would say with a formulator fact like that, one for 37, no way to really shape that up otherwise. It's not a good number. But 18 times minor awards, it's almost 50%. It makes you wonder... Maybe a little bit unlucky in some of those instances. Irad is intrigued enough to take the mount here. Has paired up 75 buyers. The problem is those races came in the summer down at Laurel Park. Um, from a number standpoint, makes a little bit of sense. My concern with that most recent run, the N1X, uh, that was the first time that this horse took on winners for what it's worth. A uh, number of horses came back and ran relatively well, but they were in off the turf races. They were on the main track. The horses that came back to run on grass a little bit on the suspect standpoint. Um, but if Irad is here, you have to think that there's a reason uh, not my cup of tea, but I can understand anyone that's a little bit intrigued. I do think this horse has a puncher's chance to hit the board. Uh, as you can see, five times a minor award winner from 11 lifetime starts to pick them third in here. Number three is unoffensive. Now let's consult that Timeform US pace projector because Timeform US has the three unoffensive out there on the lead, but taking pressure throughout by the eight horse, you have a couple other horses in close attendance and you see that red bar indicating a fast and lively pace, perhaps working against the horses that are forwardly placed. Intriguing note about unoffensive. Two lifetime starts has crossed the wire first in each of them, but was disqualified in his most recent start. That was a $40,000 claimer, not two lifetime, ran into a couple of common foes in that spot that he'll face again here. Um, from a number standpoint, took that necessary step forward in lifetime start number two, earned that 79 buyer, the 100 raw time form rating. The 79 buyer is the highest last out buyer in the entire field. Uh, I think this horse has an interesting chance in here. It'll be interesting to see how much pace is actually signed on. Does he take a lot of heat early on? Because if that's the case, it could certainly soften him up and perhaps set up for someone coming from off the pace. A horse that will be coming from off the pace. So number four, Carlos Sixes goes out for Kevin Attard. The Attard barn, a little bit on the cool side right now down at Gulfstream at the time of this recording, one for 17. But you know Kevin Attard is capable of good things up at Woodbine, and we've seen him do some good things down at Gulfstream as well. Uh, most recently... I don't think the race from this horse was all that bad in that claiming a 50 non-2 life. Unoffensive got the job done, but was disqualified in there. Uh, Victor Lounge finished ahead of this one as well. We'll get to that horse momentarily. The reason I don't think it was a terrible effort from Carlos Six is uh, that was his first start in over a year. He'd been gone for quite some time. That was a trip in which it just didn't really work out great for him. Javier was unable to save any real ground. He was carried four wide running the far turn, and he was two or three wide into that first turn as well. Um, And the pace was just sort of uh, moderate. It it wasn't anything crazy. It didn't set up for a horse like Carlos Sixes. I would imagine he's going to be tighter and ready to roll here second off the bench. Uh, It's worth noting he's only started on turf three times. One time a victory, one time a runner-up finish. So he's done some good things on the grass. I think Carlos Six is a live chance in here at 6-1. to one. Paco Lopez has them out this time around. The 5 is the Robert goes out for Guadalupe Preciado. Uh, I don't really have much to say here. 0 for 7 lifetime on grass from a number standpoint is very difficult to make. I will say, though, if you are kind of the person that likes the light bulb angle, and I am one that normally subscribes to that, 
Um, the problem is that one race most recently where you finally broke through the maiden ranks, that came in an off-the-turf race. Uh, usually those are the kind of propositions that I'm going to be against. I don't like the robber in here. The number six in here. He's Gray Nile for Dale Romans. Now, this horse has only run on turf on two different occasions. Uh, the problem is both of those times preceded long layoffs. So I don't know that we have a, a truly indicative sort of race yet for this horse as far as grass is concerned. But you do have a couple of fast races from a number standpoint, albeit on the main track. Two starts back at Saratoga when he broke his maiden, and then three starts back at Churchill Downs. 99 raw time form rating that day. This horse is interesting. I think if you're looking for a horse at a little bit of a better price, or I shouldn't say better price, but a double-digit price, uh, perhaps Gray Nile is one to keep an eye on simply because, again, I don't think you've actually seen a race that is truly indicative of what he is or isn't capable of doing on turf, given both of those races preceded long, long layoffs. The number seven, Victor Lounge, I made mention this one ran in that 50N2L most recently that a number of these horses exit. Uh, Jose Ortiz takes them out this time around. This is second off the claim from Mike Maker. This is usually a positive move for Maker. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of trip you work out here. I think he's got a little bit of pace pressing ability. He has had other instances throughout his career where he's been on the lead. I can't imagine from that sort of, I don't want to say it's an outside post, but an outer post that Jose is going to get up there and get into some kind of duel. I think he sits off, lets those other horses go out there, wing it and ding it on the front end and try to make a run and move up rounding the far turn and try to get sort of the jump on the deep, deep closers. A um, little bit concerned that this horse is a, a bit of a nibbler, seven times second or third from 13 lifetime starts. But again, this one does fit in here from a connection standpoint, and it's always and heartening anyway to see Jose take them out. The number eight horse is Watumka. This is a first-time gelding for Dane Kabiski. Haven't seen this one since the beginning of December in 2018. Um, I, that most recent run, actually, I think was was fair enough. Uh, the horse was very washy. I have as a, a trip note prior, prior to that race. The only concern I have is I like the idea that this one's going to be forwardly placed. The only victory to date came in gate-to-wire fashion. Uh, the concern for a first-time gelding, that's not an issue. It's just that his runs off the bench have left a little bit to be desired. His career debut didn't really do much. Uh, his start at Ellis Park in July of 2018, that was off of a relatively lengthy layoff. Didn't really show too much. Showed some speed and faded, and we saw the same thing in October of 18 at Indiana Grand. So I, I kind of feel like we're setting ourselves up for a little bit of speed and fade, but again, this is a horse they paid $700,000 for at one time. To me, perhaps he is a pace presence. Perhaps he softens up uh, the number three horse and sets things up for some other horses. Uh, but I will sit back and watch one before I really get involved with Watumka. Number nine, Eagle Dance. One of the rare instances where Jorge Navarro claims a horse, comes back, the horse gets bet, and is nowhere. Really, really poor effort from this one. Ran into all those common foes in that January the 31st race. If you think you're going to get back to the effort, you had two starts back at seven and a half on grass. Perhaps this one's in with a chance. How often do you get Navarro at a decent number, 8-1 to one on the morning line? This is not my preference, but I can understand there is a little bit of intrigue here for Eagle Dance. And the number 10 is Silent Tiger. This is a horse. You have a few numbers on this one's page that are relatively fast. Stretching out in distance, going off to the turf for the first time since the career debut, there's not a lot here for me to like. I do find this one a little bit intriguing from the outside, perhaps from a pace standpoint. The pace projector doesn't have this one really up there and involved. Uh, I, I shouldn't say that as this horse sitting third. But at the same time, I could see a scenario. It's a short run into that first turn on grass. I could see the rider being very, very aggressive and trying to establish position. And maybe that just plays into the whole pace situation here for this race. So Silent Tiger, not for me, but I could see him being a pace presence. Let's take a look at my selection here in the eighth race at Gulfstream on Sa on Wednesday. Excuse me, we're not Saturday yet for the race of the day on March the sixth. I'm going to go with the four in here, Carlos Sixes. I want to give him another chance. Second start off the bench for Atard. Again, I have faith in Kevin Atard's barn. I think he does some good work. Uh, the pace should be much more advantageous for this horse this time around. I'd imagine he's going to be a little bit tighter second off the bench, and hopefully. He's not hung as wide as he was in that most recent run against a number of common foes. For me, the selection, I'm going to go with the number four, the three, the two, and the one. Four, three, two, one for me in Wednesday's 8th at Gulfstream, the Wednesday DRF Bets race of the day. If you're going to play this race, any other race from Gulfstream, any other race anywhere, bets.drf.com is the way to do it, especially if you're a new sign-up member. Head on over to the website. They've got all the details there for you, bets.drf. Dot com. Schedule post time for the Wednesday DRF Bets Race of the Day, the 8th at Gulfstream Park, 410 Eastern, roughly, because it's our friends down at Gulfstream. Good luck.